Hi, I'm Richard. And I'm Lisa. And this is our camper van, Fred, an IH converted Renault Master. Our felicitous roaming economical digs, Fred. Our home from home, wherever we roam. So where is our journey taking us today? Today, we're comparing our rear wet room van to a hired rear bed van. Our hire van is a Globe Car Globe Scout from Campus for Hire, based on a Fiat Ducato. A rear bed with garage storage space underneath, mid-section kitchen with bathroom opposite and front dining area with cab seats that turned round to access the table. So how does this look in reality? Comfortable cab space with plenty room and nice to drive. So let's park up and see what it's like inside. Two burner hob and sink with a flip down lid and a pull out work bit at the side which opens in front of the door which I said I wanted. Access to the table from both sides was a big plus. As mentioned earlier the cab seats turned round to the table and I liked that the table slid backwards and forwards to give room either way. There was also an extension which we didn't use giving access to the driver's seat. As a hire vehicle it came fully equipped with everything we needed. The bathroom had a shower and a pull out board over the shower base and a toilet with a sink over. Roof light and a window made it light, plenty mirrors too and shelves in there. Next to this was a wardrobe with a hook over and then the bed with a shelf on the back door and cupboards overhead to the three sides. This was comfy enough despite being a little bit high and to say we were on a lay-by, not much noise at all. We woke fully refreshed the following morning and moved on where we could park up and have great breakfast with a great view at the side of the stream. The three nights with the van were all off grid and it was so nice to be able to just park where we wanted, eat where we wanted and have a lovely view and just be able to park up and go for a walk. We collected the van from the last of the summer wine country, Home Firth in West Yorkshire. From there we headed over the Pennines to Cheshire Oaks for something to eat and a quick shopping trip before driving into Wales and had two nights off grid in North Wales before spending the third night back in West Yorkshire. After a comfortable night's sleep we found somewhere to park up and make and eat breakfast at the side of the stream and then visited the Saigon Copper Mine which is well worth a visit. It is wet inside and you do need sensible footwear there are quite a lot of steps but it is really worth it and you do come out quite a way up the hillside with astounding views when you exit the mine. There's a cafe and a gift shop and it takes about an hour or so to do the, the tour. As you can see we had the car park to ourselves so we had something to eat before going for a walk along the riverbank. You can go either direction from the uh, car park from the bridge there along the stream we eventually came to a lake and up onto open hillside with again amazing views and we did look down onto the mine even though we wasn't sure if we could get back down that way so we came back the way we went all in all a great day out but made even better by having use of the van the freedom to just do as you want when you want from here we set off again ended up in Carnarvon for a quick bite to eat before parking up in Clamberries for the night. The following morning, we walked all the way around the Clamberries Lake and after another great day spent in Wales, left the Welsh snow and headed off back towards the Pennines and over into the Pennine snow and had a pub stay over in a car park there and a great steak night before taking the van back the following morning. So, what did we think? Did we like it? Would we buy one? Or would we buy something else? Both vans were around 6 metres or just under and had the same number of windows but slightly different sizes. Both were a medium height too. However, 
The Fiat had four seat belts, made a big difference, although this came at cost to floor space, but would be handy for taking the grandkids away or just eating. However, the Fiat had less kitchen space and less floor space around the kitchen for cooking for more. The additional pull-up space was useful but restricted when the door was open. The biggest problem was access to the loo, especially when someone was cooking. That was a big problem. It also made it slightly darker having the loo in the middle of the van. A large roof light would have been nice, like the one over the bed area, making that a bit lighter. Access to the bed was limited too, and also a bit high, although I understand this gave more garage space, but there wasn't much room for getting in and out of the bed or up through the night. The bathroom itself was adequate. I liked the pull-out floor tray on the shower. That was a good idea, but it was a bit dark, again down to the colour of the wood. The door, again, also blocking the corridor. All in all then, even though it was the layout I thought I wanted, and although I loved the lifestyle, I hated the van. It was so dark, constrictive, and cramped. Lots of little things, but I hated the van. Week after, went looking for one. I had lots to look at in various places. I saw the, and fell in love with, we both fell in love with it straight away. It was so light, airy, and felt spacious. Total contrast to the Globe Scout. Although there was limited storage space without the garage, meaning everything has to be stored inside the van. On the plus side, everything is accessible from inside the van if it's raining. A big consideration must be the number of belted seats required. Both vans were clearly only aimed at two people sleeping with extra seats for travel use only. Once again, at the cost of floor space, which was one of the deciding factors for me. And I liked the fact that this little coffee table could double as a workstation or eating table along with a drop-down kitchen workspace table, thereby allowing the floor space without the need for the big table, which we tend to use outside. With the bathroom at the end, not in the middle, blocking the light it makes a big difference even when the bed's fully out it's so much lighter an area even with the blinds fully up one thing i didn't want to have to do was get out of the cab and into the van through the side door i wanted to be able to just turn around and be able to be facing the van if it was bad weather the layouts are endless as are the size of the van the best thing I can suggest is try before you buy. Write a list of things that are important to you and things you don't think you want. Do you need to transport various things? Do you have children? Are seat belts on more than two seats important? Boot space, floor space, light, it all has an impact. Kitchen space, Will you be eating in there a lot or will you be eating out? Do you need a toilet and a shower? If not, go for a smaller one. Will you be parking on site? Will you be off grid? Do you need solar power? USB charging sockets? Or will 12 volt be okay? Do you need hot water? Do you need seats that turn round? Bench seats? Do you need heating? Blown air heating, how will it all work? It's all to be taken into consideration. I didn't want an end bathroom, but I love it. I can't recommend enough that you try before you buy. It's the only way to know what you do and don't want and what is right for you. Thanks for watching. Hope it's given you some tips if you're looking at buying a van and good things and bad things about this particular one. Thanks for watching, I hope it's been of use. I'm Leslie and I'm still in that part. Bye for now. See you soon.